We all know that sound. It's a smoke alarm. These guys sniff the air for smoke and give us early warning if there's a fire. Because fire doubles in size every minute, that early warning doubles your chances for survival. But did you know there are different types of smoke alarms for different types of fires? While any smoke alarm is better than no smoke alarm, having both types in good working order in the right places gives you the best chance for survival. To start, let's look at how smoke alarms work. Smoke alarms are like big noses, sniffing the air for particulates. That's just a fancy word that means pieces that make up the smoke. These can come from things that are burning or just the chemicals created by the fire. And the more noses, the better. For example, if you're upstairs, you might not smell mom's pie baking until the smell fills the whole house. But if your sister Sally's in the kitchen, she'll smell the pie first and give you early warning. Pie, 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 pie. Like I said, the more noses, the better. Mmm, mom makes the best pie. And just like Sally needs energy, your smoke alarms need energy too. Like this lantern, all smoke alarms should contain a battery. For some, it's the source of power. For others, it's a backup in case of power failure. Regardless, you need to change the battery every six months. We recommend you do it in the spring and fall when you set your clocks for the time change. If you don't, the batteries will wear out and your smoke alarm won't work. Like these lights, some smoke alarms are hardwired right to your home's electricity. While you'll still need to change their backup batteries, as long as the electricity is on, they're powered all the time. Another great thing about hardwired smoke alarms is that they're interconnected. That means if one sounds, they all sound, alerting you to smoke, even if it's in another part of the house. Remember, the more noses, the better. It's like having multiple Sallies. You get the idea. That early warning is important. Remember, it's those early moments in a fire that can make the difference between life and death. So having working smoke alarms in all parts of your house is crucial. Now, here's where things really get interesting. Did you know there are different types of smoke alarms? and that they're designed for different types of fires? That's right, there are different kinds of fire and we use different sensors to detect them. The first type, fast flaming fires have lots of flame and push smoke quickly. For these fires, ionization type smoke alarms work best. The second type, slow smoldering fires, produce cooler smoke that moves much slower. For these fires, photoelectric type smoke alarms work best. This type of fire can easily start from a cigarette in a sofa or chair. If you have smokers in your house, you need a photoelectric smoke alarm. There is a third kind of smoke alarm. It's called a dual alarm. It has both ionization and photoelectric alarms together in one unit. So you get the advantages of both sensing technologies. Now that we know the different types of alarms and how they work, let's put it all together and help you make the best smoke alarm choices. The Overland Park Fire Department recommends dual sensing smoke alarms hardwired into your home's electrical system with battery backup. Remember, the dual sensing alarms will alert you to both types of smoke. The hardwired alarms will give you the earliest warning possible of fire anywhere in your home. But don't worry, even if your home isn't hardwired for interconnected smoke alarms, there are wireless interconnected smoke alarms available. These can be placed in different parts of your home and will act like a hardwired system by sounding together. 
We also recommend that you have smoke alarms on every level of your home, outside the sleeping areas and inside every bedroom. Here's something else you need to know. Smoke doesn't always make it into tight spaces and corners. So when choosing a location for your smoke alarm, remember that it should be at least four to six inches away from where the wall and ceiling meet. Avoid placing them in doorways or in high vaulted peaks and keep them at least three feet away from exhaust fans and air vents. Finally, all smoke alarms need some maintenance. You should test your batteries once a month and replace them twice a year, whether they need it or not. Of course, always change your batteries if your smoke alarm starts to chirp. Is there a cricket in here? Sally, it's your smoke alarm and it's asking for a battery change. Oh. It's also a good idea to vacuum the face plates of your alarms from time to time. Cleaning out dust and insects will help eliminate false alarms. Never remove or wash your smoke alarms. Smoke alarms placed too close to the kitchen or bathroom might be activated by steam or burning food. It's important to never remove the batteries or take your smoke alarm down because of false alarms. You can solve this problem simply by moving your smoke alarm further away from the kitchen or bath. We recommend you get new smoke alarms every 10 years. Look at the manufacturer's date on the back of your smoke alarms to see how old they are and when they'll need to be replaced. And when it comes to the batteries, always use the exact battery the manufacturer recommends. There are also specialty alarms available for people with hearing difficulties. These alarms can turn on lights, strobes, or even shake the bed to alert you. Some alarms have vocal recordings advising you to exit your home. Fire! Fire! There are even alarms that will record your voice, telling kids there's a fire and they need to get out. George, wake up, there's a fire. Stay Remember, no matter which alarm you choose, any alarm is better than no alarm. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about smoke alarms. If you have any questions, please contact us at the Overland Park Fire Department because it's our job to keep you safe. Goodbye, everybody. Mm -hmm.